I'm going to respond to a, a question that almost everyone has asked me, which is about the Excel chart for the 331 maths coursework, in which you are to create a stress strain diagram for three different specimens one a metallic alloy, one copper gauge, uh, one carbon steel. So the first job is to open up Microsoft Excel, and I'm going to assume quite a low level of um, Excel knowledge in this. So we'll create the first table together, then I'll pause the video and all three will appear. So the first one is we've got our load. In fact, it's worth just titling this as um, title the sheet as metallic alloy. We will open the load. And remember that here it's the force in kilonewtons, not just newtons, so that'll be 1,000. 2,000, 3,000, and so on. So I'm going to be lazy, use a formula. So press equals to start the formula. Choose the cell. Add 1,000. And then by dragging on this small little icon in the bottom corner, we can go all the way up to 7,000. And then at that point, it goes 7,500, 8,000, 8,500. So I'll type those in manually. have it for a bit of clarity I'm going to make that bold next underneath we've got I'm going to leave a line actually and um, in here I'm going to put the extension in millimeters what Excel is is a glorified calculator at the end of the day so we can have that do the, the hard work so I'm just going to enter these directly so 0.012 Okay, now we need to make a stress strain diagram, not a load extension um, graph. So first thing we'll do is convert all these values here into meters. And to do that, with equals, to convert millimeters into meters, I divide by 1,000, slash 1,000. And that gives us quite a strange looking answer. And what that means is 1.2 times 10 to the minus 5 is standard form. And if you can't quite remember how to um, how to use that notation? Just look up scientific notation on Khan Academy. Okay, so that'll be one point two times ten to the minus five. Right. The other thing it asks for is instead of the load in newtons, it wants the stress in pascals. Now, there's some useful information in our diagram, and the information we're given is that we've got a gauge length of 25 mil and diameter 4 millimeters. So I'm going to create another line down here. Diameter, and we know it's 4 millimeters. 4. In meters, that will equal the above thing divided by 1,000. In meters. And we know that stress is equal to force divided by area. Now, this thing that I'm going to enter here isn't a real Excel formula. Um, it just is going to illustrate the point. So stress is force over area. So to work out the area, we're going to use a formula. And we can say area is pi r squared. So we can say pi. Now, I'll show you two different ways of doing this. The first one is the cheat way, which is to go 3.14 pi times... Now, the diameter is half of this value here. So I can open my brackets. And what this little statement here, as I'll just talk you through this, it means 3.14 times half of the diameter, in other words, the radius. Then this shift and 6 to get that symbol there. 
2, which means squared. So I've got pi r squared. And we've got an area in meters squared there. Now, if I was to do it the proper way, what I would do is say equals, and there's actually an Excel function called pi, which will be pi to an infinite number of decimal places. So type in pi, and then open and close brackets, pi times, now this time, I instead of doing that complicated formula, I'm just going to say 0 0.002, so I've halved it in my head, 0 0.002 squared. We should get the same value. In fact, we do there. We get the same value displayed in two different ways, which is quite interesting. So either way, both of those are the same, and we've got a value for area. So we know that stress, now this is why I left a line, stress is equal to force divided by area. So if I say equals the force, which is this cell, divided by the area, which is this cell, I get a value for the stress. Now, when I drag this across, we're going to see an error occur, divided by zero error. And if we look at what's happening, if I click on a single cell here, we'll see that C1, which is the cell of force, divided by the area, C11. So it's trying to drag this value all the way across. So we need a way of locking that second value in. And the way we do that is what's called an absolute reference. So it'll be B1, so the force, divided by the area. Now the way to do this is either press the F4 key, and it'll put a dollar sign, B, dollar sign, 11, or we can just say dollar sign, B, dollar sign, 11, so shift and four for the dollar sign. And when we drag that value across now, we'll get the actual values that we need. And basically, it will go to scientific notation if there's enough room in the cell. Um, we're not really too bothered about that. Okay, so we have the stress. What we at the moment have is the extension. So we just need to have a think about the uh, how we calculate strain. Strain is given by the change in length. So I'm going to put delta L, change in length, over the original length. Now the original length, in our case, is given to us in the question, the original length being 25 millimetres. Oops, 25. So in metres, that would be divided by 1,000. 0.025 metres, which makes sense. And stress is the change in length, in other words, the extension over the original length. We're given the extension here, that's in millimetres. We've got it calculated in meters here. So let us calculate the strain value. So to calculate the strain, we can say it's the change in length. In other words, the value here divided by the original length. We've got a strain, quite a small strain there. And we get the same error, and that's because I didn't lock this cell in. So to do the same thing again, click on the second value that I want to lock in, this red cell here. Just press F4, and there we have it. We drag that across, and even though it goes G4, H4, I4, J4, it's always B15 at the bottom. So we now have two values that we can plot against each other. The stress and the strain. So to do that, I'm just for ease, just going to copy these down into a separate. In fact, no, I'm not going to do that because it will remove all the references. OK, what I'm going to do is hit the chart function. OK, so in order to make a chart, I'm going to highlight the two columns that I want. So that would be stress and strain. So I'm going to hold down the control key so that I can so highlight the stress, hold down the control key, highlight the strain. And then I can go insert, scatter chart, and this scatter chart with the lines. Now, we get a nice looking 
graph. However, it's not quite right. It's the data, the way we've laid out the data, we've got the strain on the y-axis, the stress on the x-axis, not what we want. So in order to swap that round, what we need to do is the following. We're going to right-click on the axis there, click Select Data, and it'll give us a little pop-up here. We're going to remove all this here, which, because there's now no data series, clears the graph. Click Add, and we get a new font, uh, a new um, little pop-up dialog box. So the X values, we want to be the strain. So clicking in the X, we're going to highlight just the numbers for the strain element. The Y, we're going to delete what's present in the Y, and select just the numbers from the stress element. Hit OK, and sure enough, we get um, what's approaching the first part of the uh, stress strain diagram. Okay, so we're nearly there. Now we've got a um, a rough section of uh, or a partial section of the, the stress strain curve. What we now need to do, because this is, in inverted commas, real data, it's all over the place, this should really be forming a straight line. What I would do is I click, now in my version of Excel, I click the line, click Add, and Trend Line. Now we get a, a line of best fit, and under More Options, I can choose to display the equation on the chart. And I can see that Y equals 1 times 10 the 11x that's the gradient 1 times 10 to the 11. If we just have a look at a quick Google search we'll find that the gradient of a stress strain curve is actually the Young's modulus. Young's modulus is stress divided by strain. There's a good diagram here. And the gradient of this curve is E, or the Young's modulus. And we want to calculate the Young's modulus. So down here we can say the Young's modulus equals the gradient. And that is um, 1. It's going to use the capital notation 1, E, 11 pascals. And that's for this graph. So we've used Excel there to construct a graph, work out stress and strain without doing all the calculations ourselves, and also to put a trend line in, often known as a line of regression, and have Excel actually work out the gradient for us. So what you will need to do now is going back to our original uh, data values, They are. There they are. So our original data um, requires us to do a stress strain graph for specimen one, specimen two, specimen three. For the three different specimens, use three different sheets. And repeat that same process. You can rewatch the video if required to um, to build up the sheets and therefore calculate Young's modulus for all three specimens. Okay, good luck with that. Um, any questions we can discuss uh, discuss in class.